Hello, this is James with First Updates Now. I'm here with Team 86 from Jacksonville, Florida at the beautiful sunny Orlando Regional. They're going to be going over how they're using all of that sunshine to power their robot, as well as their very unique intake and their simplified arm in order to get the best scoring out of this machine. More to come today on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. All right, first up, Lana's going to go over how they're using solar power in order to power their machine this year. Yeah, so we... We noticed that this year is all about green energy, sustainability, and we wanted to use that to power our robot to just make the earth a better place. Um, we took recycled solar panels um, that schools didn't want, and we tested these solar panels to ensure that they worked. And once we ensured that they worked, we used them to charge lithium ion batteries, which are shown behind us. Now these lithium ion batteries uh, contain solar power and these are what are currently charging our batteries that are on our robot for this competition. We use this inverter here to convert the energy into our uh, battery charger station which charges the uh, batteries that we use on our robot. So when a battery is depleted we take it out, we charge it using solar power and then we put it back on the robot. So utilizing the solar power back at home is much simpler because you're at your shop. But here at the regional, how are you guys actually getting that solar energy? Yeah, so we actually brought five solar panels with us and put them on the top of the parking lot right next to this uh, building. Uh, right now, those are charging an extra lithium ion battery that will replace the one that we are currently using when it's depleted. All right, that sounds really interesting. This is the first time I've ever heard of any team doing that. And now we're going to go over the robot specifically with Chris. So you guys have a very unique ground intake. So can you go over how you guys utilize that as well as your use of a drivetrain in order to make some of this stuff make sense? So right now we have our, our passive intake for all cones and cubes. For cones, we if they're coming in point first, we flip this little bar down. It'll then flip the cone upright into our robot. This bar here in the center of our intake will then knock it back so it's based towards our intake. And the two and the two flywheels will then suck um, bring the cone up into the path of our claw so it's able to grab it. And speaking of that, let me turn this around so we can see the claw. And so once the cone comes up here and it's sitting on this plastic platform down here, we have a banner sensor that will sense that senses the reflection of of its own laser and it will automatically close the claw to grab a, cu a co cube or a cone like so yeah. and our claw is very simplistic instead of using motors to try to close a claw we have a singular um, pneumatic piston so all we have to do is just push a single button and it goes on or off and that's very simple for um, grabbing and dropping cones onto the poles and our entire robot is trying to be simplistic so our arm is very simplistic. This is for how we would score on the middle level. And this is how we would score on the high level. And it's all driven by pneumatic cylinders. Our arm elbow is, is operated by a pneumatic cylinder with gas struts to help absorb the impact of the claw coming down. And our slide is also driven by a pneumatic cylinder that you can see right here. And so, and also, we also have a limelight that we use in order to line up our robot accurately to all the points on the field. And so it detects the ample tags and we, at the push of a button, it will line itself up so far from the ample tag to put it as close to the um, points as possible to place cones or cubes. 
And also we are using a Mechanum drive this year. And the reason why we chose Mechanum is partial of it makes it easier to strafe uh, um, through the channel of the um, scoring station between the, um, the nodes and the charge station. And it also makes it easier with or orienting ourselves to the cones that may be knocked out over on the field and also helps with turning us around to get pick up from the charge um, from the substation that's on the other side of the field. And that pretty much about covers it. Uh, one other thing I do want to go over real quick is you guys have this kind of unique mechanism here. Can you guys just go over real quick what this is and why you're utilizing it? So originally... We did not know if our mechanums would have enough traction to get us up and over onto the charge station. And so these were originally designed to push down the charge station to allow us to get over it. And it has a simple mechanism back here that will lock it. And actually, if, if you will hold right here with one finger, I can actually pick up the robot with this one latch. It's very simple and it works. And, but it actually turns out that we, didn't, that we don't 100% need this. And we didn't truly want to scrap it, but we also noticed that it's hard to line up a cube to, to fit a hole that pretty much perfectly matches it. And so we double purposed it to have, we added these plastic little angled bits on it. And so that way, if a cube comes in here, it'll then roll right over into our intake. All right, yeah, very unique robot. Nobody really has made these decisions this year. The solar-powered stuff is really, really unique, and you guys are ranked very well. So I'm looking forward to seeing how well you guys fare later on today during Division Elims and how well you're going to fare next week in Tallahassee. All right, this is James signing off with Lana and Chris and Team 86 Resistance. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.